Hey everybody! Welcome to the Night Owls Podcast. This week we'll be doing an episode on the Men in Black. Not like the movie, but on the conspiracy theory. In my opinion, they're about the same thing. Hmm. Cool. Alright, you want to get into some reading? Into ratings and stuff? I suppose we can manage that. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. After the trouble we've had trying to get into this episode, who knows if we're going to be able to read any of this. Probably. At least I can read stuff. I just don't do good at stage fright. You're not stage having stage fright. fright. There's nobody here. I would I'm say you kidding. are pretty good at stage Ooh. fright. I'm sorry, camera. Sorry, er, Alex. Sorry, microphone. You were right up on that microphone. I was, too. There's hair all over it. I just can't hear. In popular culture and UFO conspiracy theories, men in black are supposed... Men are supposed men dressed in black suits who claim to be government... You um, went all the way down. I'm telling you, this episode is not going to happen proper. It the is men true. in black are trying to stop us. I bet you that's what's happening right now. They're somewhere waiting. They are... Supposed men dressed in black suits who claim to be government agents who harass or threaten UFO witnesses to keep them quiet about what they have seen. It is sometimes implied that they may be aliens themselves. I thought we were all going to read a sentence. The term is also frequently used to describe mysterious men working for unknown organizations as well as various branches of government, allegedly designed to protect secrets or perform other strange activities. The term is generic, used for any unusual, threatening, or strangely behaved individual on the scene. No, whose appearance? Whose appearance on the scene can be linked in some fashion with a UFO sighting. Several alleged encounters with the men in black have been reported by UFO researchers and enthusiasts. Hidden among the avalanche of documents leaked by Edward Snowden were images from a PowerPoint presentation by GCHQ entitled The Art of Deception, Training for a New Generation of Online Covert Operations. Images include camouflage moths, inflatable tanks, women in burkas, and complex diagrams plastered with jargon, buzzwords, and slogans, disruption, Operational playbook. Swap the real for the false and vice versa. People make decisions <clears throat> as part of groups and beneath a shot of hands shuffling a deck of cards. We want to build cyber magicians. Curiously sandwiched in the middle of the document are three photographs of UFOs. Not real ones. Classic fakes. One was a hubcap, another was a bunch of balloons, and one that turned out to be a seagull. Devout ufologists might seize upon this as further proof that our governments know something about aliens and their transportation methods. But really, it suggests the opposite. The UFO community is a textbook case of a gullible group susceptible to manipulation. Having spent too long watching the skies and X-Files, it's implied they'll readily swallow whatever snippet of evidence suits their grand theory. If there really is a UFO conspiracy, it's surely the worst kept secret in history. <clears throat> Roswell, Area 51, flashing lights, little green men, abductions, it's all been fed through the pop culture mill to the point of fatigue. Even the supposed enforcers of the secret, the men in black, have their own movie franchise, like you mentioned at the start. Mm-hmm. But a new documentary, Mirage Men unearths compelling evidence that UFO folklore was actually fabricated by the U.S. government. Hmm. Rather than covering up the existence of aliens, could it be that the real conspiracy has been persuading us to believe in them? Mirage Men's chief coup is to land an actual man in black, a former Air Force Special Investigations officer named Richard Doty, who admits to having infiltrated UFO circles. A fellow UFO researcher says, Doty had this wonderful way to sell it. I'm with the government. You cooperate with us and I'm going to tell you what the government really knows about UFOs. Deep down in those vaults. 
Doty and his colleagues fed credulous ufologists lies and half-truths, knowing their fertile imaginations would do the rest. In return, they were apprised of chatter from the community, thus alerting the military when anyone was getting too close to their top-secret technology. And if the Soviets thought the U.S. really was communing with aliens, all the better. The classic case well known to conspiracy aficionados is Paul Benowitz, a successful electronics entrepreneur in New Mexico. In 1979, Benowitz started seeing strange lights in the sky and picking up weird transmission on his amateur equipment. The fact that he lived just across the road from Kirtland Air Force Base should have set alarm bells ringing. But Benowitz was convinced these phenomena were of extraterrestrial origin. Being a good patriot, he contacted the Air Force, who realized that far from eavesdropping on E.T., Benowitz was inadvertently eavesdropping on them. Instead of making him stop, though, Doty and the other officers told Benowitz they were interested in his findings. That encouraged Benowitz to dig deeper. Within a few years, he was interpreting alien languages, spotting crashed alien craft in the hills from his plane, he was an amateur pilot, and sounding the alert for a full-scale invasion. All the time the investigators were surveilling, were surveilling him surveilling them. They gave Benowitz computer software that interpreted the signals and even dumped fake props for him to discover. The mania took over Benowitz's life. In 1988, his family checked him into a psychiatric facility. There's plenty more like this. As Mirage Men discovers, central tenets of the UFO belief system turned out to be ori- turned out to have far earthlier origins. Mysterious cattle mutilations in 1970s New Mexico turn out to have been officials furiously investigating radiation and livestock after they had conducted an ill-advised experiment in underground nuclear fracking. Test pilots for the military's experimental silent helicopters admit to attaching flashing lights to the craft to fool civilians. Doty himself comes across as a slippery character, to say the least. He remains as an absolute enigma, says Mark Pilkington, writer of the book Mirage Men, the basis for the documentary. He found the retired Doty working as a traffic cop in a small New Mexico town. Some of what he said was true, and I'm sure a lot of it wasn't, or was a version of the truth. I have no doubt Rick was at the bottom of the ladder that stretches all the way to Washington. It's unclear to what extent he was following orders and to what taking matters... And to what extent taking matters into his own hands? Doty almost admits to having had a hand in supposedly leaked classified documents such as the Majestic 12 dossier spilling the beans on a secret alien liaison liaison however you say it liaison committee founded by President Truman. But he denies involvement in the Project Serpo. Papers which claim that 12 American military personnel paid a secret visit to the alien planet in the Zeta Reticuli Reticuli system, only to be caught out as the source of the presumed hoax. The Serpo scenario, it has been noted, is not unlike the plot of Steven Spielberg's Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Does that suggest that the forgers lazily copied the movie? Or that the movie is based on real events and Spielberg was in on the conspiracy. The place of the movies in the grand UFO conspiracy is a tricky area. Depending on which theory you subscribe to, Hollywood's steady stream of sci-fi is either a deliberate exaggeration designed to make the truth look unbelievable, the you've been watching too many movies defense, or it's a way of psychologically preparing the populace for staggering alien secrets yet to be revealed. There are at least grounds for suspicion in the latter camp. Pilkington points to the CIA's Psychological Strategy Board, founded after the Second World War to promote U.S. propaganda. Associated with the board was veteran film producer Daryl 
Zanuck. In 1951, Zanuck executive produced sem- seminal alien visitation sci-fi, The Day the Earth Stood Still. Often cited as a government-sanctioned testing of the waters for alien contact. Like Z- Zanuck, the film's writer Edmund North was ex-military, while director Robert Wise apparently became a UFO believer on account of discussions he's had with Washington figures during the making of the movie. Steven Spielberg is less likely is a less likely government stooge, though he has been obsessed by aliens his entire career. From Close Encounters and E. T. up to War of the Worlds and the last Indiana Jones film, not forgetting his producer role in Falling Skies, Transformers, and Men in Black itself actually. If anyone's paving the way for the big reveal, it's Spielberg. But after 30 years of paving, we're still waiting. Mirage Men's... Mirage... I'm sorry. Mirage Men finds an extreme... An even more extreme example in the form of industry veteran Robert Emeniger. Emeniger. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Uh, I'm terrible. Who claims that in 1971, he was approached by the Pentagon to make a film revealing what the government really knows. The Pentagon's big lore was that they would let him incorporate top secret footage of an alien craft landing at the Holloman Air Force Base in the 1960s. Predictably, the footage never materialized, but Abenegger, who no less cryptic a character than Richard Doty, claims to have seen it, and still believes alien contact has been established. He went ahead and made his documentary entitled UFOs Past, Present, and Future, presented by Rod Twilight Zone Sterling. It culminates in the rather anticlimactic reconstruction of the Holloman UFO landing. In the cold light of the post-Cold War, the evidence is starting to look pretty shaky for UFOs. Numbers of UFO conventions and clubs are dwindling. The UK's Ministry of Defense closed its UFO desk in 2009, and like many countries, has declassified its UFO documents. If there was any smoking gun, you'd imagine it would have been found in our current golden age of leaks and disclosure. But so far, there's only been more smoke. On a Guardian web chat in 2010, Relating to WikiLeaks' release of the U.S. Embassy cables, Julian Assange asserted that many weirdos email us about UFOs, but he'd come across nothing concrete. There were references to UFOs in the cables, he noted, but mostly to do with UFO cults rather than UFOs themselves. In the same way that GCHQ's Art of Deception slideshow references UFO cults. If nothing else, the leaked GCHQ document tells us that tells us the Mirage Men are still out there, sowing deception, sowing deception. I'm sorry, and disinformation. These days, they're more likely to be target suspects, extremists, religious groups, or hackers and online fraudsters. Meanwhile, recent claims to have deciphered hidden backwards messages about UFOs in Edward Snowden's interview only go to show how desperate the alien conspiracy cause has become. There's something else ufologists are a textbook example of. Cognitive cognitive dissonance, the mental distress of trying to hold two conflicting worldviews simultaneously. The term was coined in 1950s by psychologist Leon Festinger, who illustrated it with um, the example of a UFO cult shattered by the unfulfilled prophecy of an alien visitation. Some tenacious devotees still refuse to accept Mirage Men's findings, says Pilkington. If beliefs are strongly held, nothing can sway them, and anything that appears to undermine them will just be absorbed and repurposed. So if you're really, really dedicated, this is just chaff to throw you off the trail. Pilkington himself has been accused of working for MI5 or being a stooge controlled by the government, if not the aliens. 
if I'm under intelligent control from elsewhere, that I'm unaware of it, and I'm a victim, and it would be against my programming for me to be able to prove it, he reasons. As always in the conspiracy theory hall of mirrors, it's possible to flip the hypothesis on its head. What if the lies and hoaxes Mirage men reveal are simply a smokescreen for the fact that the authorities really do know secrets about extraterrestrials? What better way to conceal them than by getting found out? In their disinformation tactics, what better way of throwing skeptics off the scent than disseminating the confessions of the X-Man in black, like Richard Doty, in documentaries and articles and respectable new organizations like this one? Perhaps we're no closer to knowing if the truth really is out there, but we can be sure that the lies are. Huh. That was pretty interesting. <clears throat> it's an interesting write-up, for sure. What do you think? Hmm. You really don't know too much about Men in Black. What did this do for you? Like, did it open your eyes to see more? I think all I see from that is that they're trying to explain that we, we're still at the same point as in the beginning. We still know nothing. Mm -hmm. That's all they're saying. Through that whole long list, it's literally saying, hey, we might think we know something, but we actually don't know anything. Mm hmm are the man in black real? We don't know. Are the man in black not real? We don't know. Are aliens real? We don't know. Because they were just making logical circles. Mm -hmm. That's all they did. That By, thing. We can't say they're real, but they could be real because we're saying that they aren't real. Because that's what we would do. But once again, trying to make them. this. Right, you know. But that's what that's like what they're trying to say the government could be doing. By the government admitting that they're real, they could actually be lying. But think about it. Doesn't that make sense? The best way to hide a secret is a part truth. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. If that in itself is just a lie, that's what this write-up did wrong, if you ask me. It's not wrong. It's just it's it's making logical circles that don't answer anything. Which bore most people to tediousness. It, it's, it makes it's them a, want to leave it. It's a write-up that doesn't have to answer anything by the end of it. It's but, easy. I like the idea. I mean, in all reality, if I was to try to tell you a secret, but I don't want you to know what I'm talking about, hmm. and you really want to know what I'm talking about, so I say, oh, well, there was something about this. You believe me, think that's true, right? And so you go ahead saying you know my secret. When in reality, did I tell you the secret, or did I tell you something to throw you off the track? Which then again, it all comes down to the fact that they said it themselves. UFO believers will never believe anything the government tells them. No, because they believe they're covering it up. But even why do the they accept? Even if the government came out and said, yes, UFOs are real, they would the say, UFO yeah, believers would say, yeah, we knew that. Or would they would say something along the lines of, well, you know, maybe, you know, it, it's just like I said, the logical circles. Maybe they were just speaking in circles to try and throw us off the actual trail. Mm -hmm. Exactly. See... In my opinion, it's like walking backwards through the snow to try and keep a, a animal from following you. It's I mean, the tracks are still there, but, but yeah, they're going the wrong misleading. way. Misleading, you know. And that's uh, why I was saying that idea. whole circle thing. That's what it felt like they were doing. It, the whole article, the, the whole write-up, is really a logical circle that doesn't have to answer anything by the end of it because it is just a circle. Which there's nothing wrong with circles, but like right. I said, let's say for example, it's a good article. Well, or it's a good write-up, I mean. I keep saying article. Let's say, for example, Lindsay and I want to have a baby. <laughs> but we don't want to tell anybody else we're having a baby. Everybody's suspicious we might be having a baby, so we start talking about how we could have had a baby. Mm -hmm. And then they think, oh, they're just making that up. There's no proof. And so we could, we could go around in circles. We're not actually telling you we're going to have a baby. That way, once we find out more about having a baby, it will still be a kind of surprise. Whereas... This kind of idea might be the same idea. We're going to tell them a little bit of what we know might be happening. But let's not give them enough information to make them think it's actually happening. It just seems silly to me in the end that the government would do that. Ah, government wants us to still be scared of something, don't they? Yeah. I mean, it's easy to control people that are in fear. It's That's funny how true. 
it's funny how all those movies, people that were directors and producers in them, somehow seem involved in this. Right. It's... Mm. It's also interesting that the Men in Black movies make the Men in Black out to be good guys. Right. That's certainly something to that. Hmm. In all reality, we don't find that the Men in Black are assassins or anything. We do find out that they make people's memories disappear un- with no authorization. Well, I mean, I don't know about all that. I just know that from what I know about the stories I've heard about the Men in Black, it's a lot of intimidation tactics and things like that. And, you know, to treat citizens of a place that way, if it is a government agency authorizing those tactics, I think it's not very but then, right. But then this runaround here was talking about them. It didn't say anything about them being harsh. Actually, it made Doty sound like one of the men in black. But I, there's also a side of that that maybe this dude's just crazy, you know? Mm-hmm. It's, it all just comes down to, like, I don't know. The I thing about know. the men in black is that it comes down to eyewitness accounts. That's where you'll find anything. And then I'd have to read the Mirage Man to see what that's all about. I've heard of it. I've just never seen it. Like, the thing about the um, Men in Black is it's it's not about the whole. It's about, you know, people's experiences. That That's where you'll get your information from. But once again, even if you start investigating into some of those... Don't you have to wonder sometimes if there's cover-ups about them? Well, of course. I mean, that's why things like, you know, like ghosts, like we did two weeks ago, that's, sure, you could say that a lot of these people are just seeing things or, you know, who knows. But when you get to such a high number of experiences, you have to understand the fact that even if only 1% of them are unexplainable, that 1% is still something. So, we aren't here disproving the fact of aliens or no. proving that there are aliens. That's not our desire here. Well, our desire is to question the men in black and wonder what they yeah. say. Yeah, we'll cover aliens at a later point. That's yeah, one thing about this write-up. It starts talking about aliens, but that's not what we're here for. We're here for the men in black. Yeah. Not for aliens. We'll do aliens some other time. For mm-hmm. sure. But like, you know, own... you know how many people like their 15 seconds of fame right. by saying something happened? And then you have to question, well, did this actually happen or didn't it? Right. And again, we'll never know, will we? No, but there's still an idea that when there's so many experiences conveyed, you have to look at the possibility that like I said with ghosts, there's so many ghost stories that people tell. There's You have to look at the possibility that even if only one of them is telling the truth, then there has to be something to it. Well, speaking of people's experiences, we have a couple stories here. Maybe we should go along with them and see what the readers think. Before we do that, I want to get Lindsay to talk because it's just been the two of us talking the whole time. Lindsay, where are you at on the first write-up? I thought it was interesting. It's kind of hard to wrap my brain around, like... What I think about it. That's the hard thing is I found the article that we just read. And there's not much out there about the men in black. There's lots of stories but there's no like. There's not very many people like talking about who they are and. Like where they came from I guess. Like, we don't know where they came from. I honestly believe that the men in black are aliens themselves. Okay. And they're just trying to make it so people can't find out who they are. It's like, leave us alone. You're not going to do this anymore. We don't want you to find out about us. Hmm. But under that theory, why would they come then to Earth? Usually when something in human mindset would come to Earth, it would be to either show a power... To glean information? I or think they to... do. So you think they're gleaning information? Then why haven't they gone, 
left and taken that information out. How we do don't you know, know they haven't? Yeah, we don't know if they've done that. You know, they very might, they very maybe could have, or maybe mm-hmm. they have uh, the ability to transfer data at a speed that's near light speed. You know, mm-hmm. maybe they can send information halfway across the galaxy and like, like that. You know, and maybe their years aren't quite the same as ours. And that's why they've been here so long. Maybe it's a lot less further out. Well, maybe they're a long-lived species. Who knows? It's That's the thing about aliens. Is we that just don't know. Here's I'll say this about aliens, and we're going to talk about aliens at a later point. Um, in one of these episodes we're going to do about aliens. I will say this about aliens. Mathematically, there is life out there other than us. Knowing that what we know about the size of the universe... It is mathematically impossible for life to not exist other than us. Whether that life has made its way here, that's when you that's where you have to decide. Are you know, are the aliens here or are they just out there? That's the question. Well didn't one of you guys figure you were an alien? Hmm. <laughs> which one of us is the alien? Me. You're the alien? Are yeah. you the one that's hatched, Alex? Yeah. Yep, I was the one. This is a thing that our parents did a long time ago. <laughs> Alex was hatched from an egg. I was an alien. Well, I still am an alien, I guess. And our brother Christopher, he's the oldest of all three of us. He He doesn't get the interesting one. No, he was adopted. That's yeah, it. <laughs> he just gets the boring one. <laughs> That's pretty interesting, though, about the men in black. Yeah. So we want to get into reading these stories? Yeah. You you shared what you believe Men in Black are. I think we'll wait till these stories are done and then both of us can share what our actual feeling is on what they are. Mm-hmm. Who they are. Who wants to read the first one? You want to take it? I'll take it. A man known only as Larry claims that one night he was drifting off to sleep when he is contacted by a strange presence who communicated with him telepathically. This weird presence explained that he was not from Earth, but beyond that, he gave no reason for contacting Larry. Somewhat skeptical, Larry asked the presence to provide some proof of its existence beyond simply sending thoughts into his head. He wanted a face-to-face meeting. The presence agreed to provide him with further proof. He would show up during the day when Larry was with his best friend. Larry wasn't sure what to make of the entire thing the next day, and while he continued on with life as usual, he obsessed about the dream for months afterwards. Eventually, he caught up with his buddy at an Independence Day celebration at a nearby park. As Larry was talking with his friend, a black van pulled up nearby and two black-clad men got out. Two more similarly dressed men exited the the van after them, but they did not appear to be entirely human in shape. The strange men sat down at a nearby picnic table, looked over at Larry, and then re-entered their van and left just as mysteriously as they had arrived. Larry never found out why they had contacted him. Hmm. It's interesting. Hmm. I go. I guess I'll go ahead and do the next one. Yeah, you can take it. A video is captured of two men in black who allegedly entered a hotel in Canada and started asking questions about one of the hotel employees. The stories say that the employee in question had recently seen a UFO and had told others about his experience. Not long after, these two men showed up at his place of employment. Luckily for him, he was not working during their visit. According to witness accounts, the men were on, were asking people not only about the employee in question, but about um experience, uh, but also about conspiracies in general. They had no eyebrows or eyelashes, strange hypnotic eyes, bald heads, possibly descri- disguised by wigs and clothes that seemed to be meant for fitting in, but somehow were just enough out of place to raise alarm bells. These two men were definitely caught on the camera. The question is whether they were clandestine government agents, beings from another world in disguise, or simply a product of a clever hoax. 
Regardless of the answer, there is something hair-raising about two men in suits walking to a hotel in the middle of the day asking strange questions about one of the employees, then leaving as mysteriously as they came. Hmm. I've actually seen that video, which I think everybody has seen that, right? I think so. Yeah. Hmm. Not me. I'll have to show it to you at some point. Mm Mm-hmm. Here we go. Um, An anonymous postal worker from Washington, D.C. was out delivering mail one day when he decided to stop. When he decided to stop and eat an apple. When he was finished, he looked around for a trash can and finding none, decided to just toss it onto the ground. Before he could leave the area, a security guard approached him and lectured him for his negligence, explaining that the entire building and surrounding grounds were under constant surveillance. The postal worker thought about this, along with the fact that he had already had to be buzzed in to deliver the mail, began thinking that there was more to this place that, than met the eye. A while later, he was out on his usual delivery run when he came by the foreboding building again. This time he saw three men walking towards the building, except they didn't appear to be like men. They waddled when they walked instead of putting one foot in front of the other, and they were abnormally thin. It was this thinness more than anything that frightened him. Though shaken, he decided to soldier on and march his way up to the door to deliver the mail. When he entered, he found a group of men who began questioning him about what he had seen moments earlier. He was flabbergasted and unable to respond until one of the strange beings who had s- he had seen earlier s- uh, sidled up near him at which point he felt even more terrified. After more grilling by the men in the room, and after repeating that he had seen nothing at all, he was allowed to leave. His mail route was changed shortly after. Hmm. I think I've actually read that story before. It creeps me out. You want to get the next one? An anonymous man who related a tale of a strange experience he had while sightseeing in Washington, D.C. Without realizing that there really wasn't anything of interest for a civilian to see, he wandered into the State Department building. He meandered through the lobby for a while until security became suspicious of him and headed over to usher him out of the building. However, before they could do so, he saw something that he would never forget. The elevator opened and five men got out. Two of them were very businesslike and wore gray suits that were formal but hardly remarkable beyond that. What drew his attention were the other three men and their escort. These men wore black hats pulled low over their eyes and long black trench coats even though it was the middle of the summer. The appearance seemed so strange that our observer could only describe it as cartoonish. As they were walking by, one of the strange men lost his footing on the marble floor and fell to the ground dropping his portfolio in the process. Upon helping him up, he noticed that the man's legs seemed extraordinarily weak and felt like there was a thick layer of wool underneath his suit. Even stranger, the man's expression never appeared to change at all, despite falling onto the hard marble floor. Near the dropped portfolio, he found a small coin with words written on it, no language he could identify one side depicted a man with features like a wolf, and the other had navigational lines and two crescent moons. Hmm. That's another one. I feel like I've actually read that before. I've read these to you. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I had read him these stories previously to make sure we were all cool with going with these stories. Hmm. No, I didn't don't... read them to me. Yes, I did. You were too busy on your phone. You didn't read them to me. <laughs> wow. So... I'm not exactly sure where the stories came from. It's been too long ago that I found them. But if they would have had a person that wrote the story, like the original author, I would have included it. But I literally couldn't find Hmm. who actually wrote the story. I know that for sure. Right. Because I like giving credit where credit is due. Mm-hmm. We all do. Yeah. It's all a big thing for us. Well, what do you guys think about it all? Wait, what is your opinion on 
the men in black after hearing everything that we read and about the stories that we read like wh what is your opinion on it who wants to go first brian well i really struggle with the fact that there was only two or three episodes uh portions in these stories that ever talked about black or even suits the one actually said gray suits, so it wasn't technically men. No, in those black. were the other two. Those are the other men. Yeah, the two in front. That were just there, like. They doesn't. Escorting. He doesn't say the coats were trench coats. I mean, black trench coats. Well, it just says that they're black. They're I think. I think when we look at it, we find that that was the idea they gave across. And I understand that, but whether they're aliens or agents. We were talking earlier about how it seems like maybe the government's trying to hide something. And all these stories, I don't find that. We find that they went to a hotel, yes. But we don't find out that they were actually doing anything to suppress it. They were probably trying to see what was known already. What were they there for is the question. Well, it all depends. How do we know? Well, before we get into that, I think we should finish off by saying precisely what our... Like, what do you think they are? Yeah, what do you think the men in black are? I don't think there's any such thing as a men in black. So you okay. think they were just people? No, these are people making up stories. Are they making it up, or did they just see people? And they're like, oh, those people look weird. Well, th this is the way I look at it. Let's say, for example, you have a conspiracy going out. This is a conspiracy theory. Yeah. And you tell me about this conspiracy, about these police officers that wear brown hats... But that they're not really police officers. Okay. They're actually aliens that are trying to see our traffic habits. Okay. Every time I see a brown-hatted police officer, will I not think that he might be an alien? And therefore, because my mind's already trained to believe something, hmm. I will see something that isn't there. Right. For all we know, these guys could have heard something about the story and wanted to know about it. And so they were asking about it and asking if there was any other cool conspiracy theories because they might have been ghost hunters or alien hunters. We don't know. Because we don't see anything past that story, we can't say what happened, whether they ever contacted that man who had the information. We, we don't know that. For all we know, they could be aliens. Hey, that'd be really cool, you know. But I don't see enough proof in any of these stories... This last one is the one with the most proof, I think. But why does it sound like it's coming from two different people? Well, do you think that the people that are saying, oh, I saw, you know, I saw two guys in gray suits and then three people behind them, which looked strange and the one fell and his expression never changed. Do you think that what they're seeing is just people that are just different? They're just... Give me a second. I want I want to see how this story starts. Right. Because that's one of my key ideas. See black trench coats. Did it say black? Yeah. Yeah, they wear black. Especially in the middle of the summer, that's strange, you know. But who knows? People just do different things. Are it do you think it's possible that they're just people? Well, we don't know. I'm just asking what you think about the story from what you've heard. See, it could be anything or everything. It could be time travelers. Well, what do you think? Yeah, what do you think? Not what everybody else thinks. What do you think? Do you think that this dude just saw three people just, just in a, coming out of an elevator and he's like, or... oh, they look strange? Or do you think it's something else? I mean, what what is your opinion? I have no idea. I mean, like I said, this is a new theory to me. I've never heard of it before until you guys said to bring it up. But um, whether they could be aliens or whether they could be agents, I'd say they lean more towards the idea of them being aliens. But that doesn't follow my line of logic. Well, we want to hear your line of logic. Where do you land on the thing? Let's start out at a base point. This particular one story right here. Do you think this is a true account of someone actually seeing something, or do you think this this person is just making up a story? Let's just start. If you don't want to answer it that way, I mean, well, see, that's not even a fair assumption for me to make. I could say everybody's making up a story. You could, but whether or not you believe it, that's a choice to make. 
I mean, this guy talks about how he was going into the state sightseeing. Nobody yeah. else was there. So there's nobody to back up his story. Right. He's a conspiracy nut. He wants to sh- shed some light on something and get some people interested in it. How do you know that he's a conspiracy nut? He's anonymous. Yeah, we don't really know much about the person. I was saying, and the fact that he came up with all this, it's very likely he is a conspiracy nut. You don't come up with this off the top of your head. Yeah, well, but what if it really happened? What that's if it really happened? From. That's what we're saying. If it really happened, we don't know. But if it really happened... I want to see the coin. He doesn't have the coin. He, he probably gave it back, back to him. the person. He probably. said he picked it up. He said he picked he it held up. It he long saw enough it to for see a it couple yeah. seconds and he handed it back probably. So he He's, probably gave it back to the person. He saw it long enough to see that it had the man's head and the yeah. crescent moons. I mean, if, if you saw someone fell over and then you helped them up and picked the things up, would you keep it or would you give it back to them? I mean, you wouldn't really think about it until later. You're like, wait a minute, what was on that coin? But he did that think about it. That's the thing. But... How do you know that he thought about it? You don't know who he is. Did you? Was it you? <laughs> I, I'm just saying. Most people don't think with your kind of mindset, whereas, like, you notice everything up front. Most people, things happen and they're like, wait a minute, what just happened? And they have to reprocess everything that just happened and figure it out. You know what I mean? I agree with that. Sorry for being so close to the mic. But. How did he see these features? The coin? Give me one second. I'll see if I have one. Where's the coin tub? He's up here doing something. Not quite sure it's what. It's out in the living room. Okay. Just, just give me a second. I'll be right back. Just like pretend to drop this thing. Just pick it up. What's it? Okay. Well. well our uh, our our event here has been postponed for a moment. He needs a coin. So, how's the weather? <laughs> it's snowing. Oh yeah, it is snowing today. I don't like it. Okay, supporting my theory, I'm going to do something with Alex. Okay. I'm going to take something that you've probably never seen before. All right. Got to find the right one. Right there. Here we go. We're about to do an experiment, folks. This is going to be okay. revolutionary. I'll drop it, and I want Alex to hand it back this to is, you. No, this is my experiment. I'm walking by. I trip. I drop a coin. Alex picks it up and hands it back to me. Well, first, he helps the guy up. So I'm going to help you up. You help me up. I look down. I see you dropped a coin. I'll pick up the coin. If I can even pick up a coin. Pick up the coin. Hmm. And then I just hand it back. Okay, so what did the coin say on it? And why did you look at my coin so long? Because it was a coin that looked interesting to me. But it's not your coin. No, but I picked it up to look at it and I gave it back. So what did it say on it? I don't know what it said. I saw a number 10. That was about it. That's about it. That's that's what I'm saying. Why? So you would see a wolf's head. You could see a man's head, but what was the head on the front? I didn't even see it that long. That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. You you still looked at it. Yeah. But you didn't look at it long enough. For some reason, the guy, unless you have a photographic memory like mine, is the head of Queen Elizabeth, and there's a ten cent on the back. It's a Hong Kong. If I looked at that ten, and it looked like chicken scratch, I would remember it. The fact that, I think what happened here is the guy looked at the coin, realized he didn't see a number that he recognized, and said, well, that's a language I can't identify. Right. But once again, look at Queen Elizabeth's head. A typical coin, and I've studied coins, I know about every coin in the world. Hmm. You notice that there's no way to see the body on the coin. See the body? On coins, when you even take a look at eagles, you have to look closely to see the feather detail. Right. How did he, how did he know that it had f- depicted a man with features like a wolf? He probably just saw a long snout. He was like, "That looks like a wolf." Something it's possible. Like I mean, I don't know, but we're we're I feel like we're arguing all the wrong points. 
What I'm, I'm trying what I'm trying to say, I'm not trying yeah. to say it could or couldn't be. What I'm saying is that I I'm playing the doubting devil's advocate. Right. Do I believe in aliens? Absolutely. Science seems to prove that there's got to be something out there, like uh, Alex was explaining. Mathematics. Mathematically so. As many worlds are out there, we can't be the only one with life on it. Exactly. So I totally respect that. But that being said, the the instant in this case just seems almost too far-fetched. For the event to have actually happened? Yes. Okay. But that's not the question that I'm asking. My question is, if this really happened the exact way that they wrote it, what do you think that those three people were? That's what it's getting down to. Three people wearing black trench coats. Yes. But they felt like wool underneath. Right. Well, that's definitely not human, and we don't have bipedal creatures on Earth unless it's a Sasquatch. Right. And they are, like, covered with hair, supposedly. So, I mean, maybe they were training some chimpanzees. Who knows? I mean, I'm just asking you... <laughs> If this I honestly story think true, if this story is true, there's only one thing that makes sense. If those three are men in black, what are they? That's all I want. If they're men in black and they're weird like that, I mean, we're no, not they're not human. So are they really men in black? If well, if triple, that's what the men in black are, then they must be something. Right. What are they? That's Who what knows? I'm asking. What do you think? If this story is true, then what are the men in black? If this story was true, I would lean towards the idea that Lindsay said that they could be aliens. So you're on the alien camp, then? Yes. If this story is true. Okay. How's your view on it? I think that they are androids. Incredibly accurate androids. Well, not incredibly, because they, this one never changed his facial expression, so I don't think he figured that out. Meaning? I think they are robots. With skin on them that's meant to look human. They're meant to look human from a distance. So what would explain the wooly? Well, he's got robot legs. You Put a layer of wool on it so you can touch them and be like, Ooh, that's metal. Instead, if it's wool, you touch it and be like, Hmm, it's cloth yeah. instead or whatever. Interesting. But why did he slip then? Because he wasn't used to marble floors. Exactly. Walking huh. around on marble floors with robot legs? But you would think if, if he would have helped him up, Right. Would not he have noticed that they were... He fell in a weird way. He said he was weak on his legs. Crumbled. His legs, his legs, his legs were very weak. Which isn't technical for a robot. It could be, though. I mean, we don't... It could be. That's the thing. Maybe they had a hydraulic problem. Could be. It makes sense. Interesting. So you're thinking that some of this alien stuff could be just robots that they're trying to hide until they haven't fully figured out. I just think that the men in black are just robots. I think they're sent to to discredit anybody's opinion on whether aliens are real or not. Which would also explain the first, the other story in the hotel. Instead of paying real people to do it, I think they are sent to say, Hey, robot, or um, aliens are fake, stop believing in them, and then they leave. They get back in the van, they put them in their charging pod, and send them to the next alien believer. Hmm. I think that's just that simple. Well... When you get to see your guy in UFO, let's hope that the men in black come to get you, because then you can find out for us. Well, uh, I don't know. We're going to do a video on UFOs at some point. Mm-hmm. I may or may not have a story to share when that time comes. Cool. I know our this father is... has a story. Yeah. But we want him to share his own story in his own words. Which I still think, and I'll say this right now, I still think that the owl is something. The owl? The white owl. Oh, yeah. I still think that that's something. I don't think that that was an owl. I think that was something else. Mm. I'm going to say that. Yeah. There is a story um, that our parents have told us. Hopefully one day we can share it on here. Just strange experiences, the weird stuff that happens in this world. And we'll get in there, you know? Yeah. There's there's some interesting theories about owls involving aliens. And I think that I think that story needs to be told on that particular episode of the Night Owls podcast. Is there anything you would like to read? There's one thing I would like to read that I have actually gathered. You asked me earlier. You know, that's the there's second time I dropped my pens all over the floor. You asked me if the men in black 
are here, what are they doing? Right? Like, what are they... I got it. Right? Isn't that a thing that you ask? Right? Hmm. You ask, if the men in black are here... If they're aliens, what are they doing? Why are they... I mean, usually, if let, let's say, for example, we go to another country. Right. And we want to find out our information, right? We will go under a, a disguised as a countryman. I understand that. But once you've done your own investigation, you've in, infiltrated enough, eventually there comes a time where you either have to expose yourself and cause mass panic. Right. Or as our spies would do, they'd go back home with their information, then the U.S. will invade. Hmm. So my question is, are they... A, Invasions, uh, forewarning, or are they just like you said, robots with no desire of anything but to mislead? I don't think they're here to mislead, I think they are here to protect. They're here to protect the information about the existence of aliens here at Earth, right? And here's why I believe that I have a list here. Of noted ufologists, people who have studied UFOs, and people who have believed in UFOs for a very long time. These are people who have, after they have had an experience with a UFO, seeing one, the men in black, they have claimed to say that the men in black, the men in black have visited them after seeing UFOs. So we've got guys like, we've got... Harold Dahl, Albert K. Bender, John Keel, and Jerome Clark. And these are all ufologists that have all told stories about UFOs, believe, you know, in UFOs, and and um, you've even wrote, um, written books about UFOs and aliens and conspiracy theories and things like these. I think that that right there goes to show these people who have, and it's always... From what I have seen, it's it's when people see UFOs, there's a very high chance that they will be visited by the men in black. And those men in black always tell them, you didn't see anything, it's not real, it was just a plane, whatever, whatever, whatever. Giving them the, you know, giving them the runaround. And I think they're doing it to try and protect the knowledge from getting out, you know? But why? Because if people... If the mass public knew and believed that aliens existed, that would completely tear down probably religion. Mm-hmm. You know? But isn't religion in itself just a confirmation of aliens? There's people who would definitely argue with that. Because think about it. They're talking about somebody who's up in the skies, comes down, makes a planet, makes night and day, right. and then goes back up to the skies, half of his... Um, Half of his people get upset with him, and, well, actually a third of them, get upset with him, and he casts them out of heaven to some other planet. Hmm. Technically, it's a whole story of aliens and their wars. Well, I don't think that the major amount of people don't, I don't think they see it that way. They don't look at it that way. But in all reality, that's all it is. They, they say he's not from Could Earth. be. I mean. If he's not from here, then he has to be an alien. I mean, that's if you believe it, you know what I mean? So... I mean... If you believe any of it, which, I mean, that's... Well, yeah, exactly, but even, there's too much... There's too much lore and mythology to go away without saying that there's some kind of something. What? You can't... What I'm saying is there's too much more... More and lithology. <laughs> lore and mythology, including the Bible. You know you just can't come up with a story on yourself. Do you know that you can't imagine anything... That you had at least one time seen. Well, I mean, J.R.R. Tolkien made an entire world in the Lord of the Rings books. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And no one else read them, wrote them with him. He did it. He created entire languages for those books. Mm-hmm. I mean, if he could do it, some people 2,000 years ago could do it. Mm-hmm. You think? Absolutely. I don't doubt their, their ability. I mean, how do twins have their own languages? I mean, But what about 10,000 years ago? 
long before the story of the Bible. 10,000 years ago, we were still clanging rocks together, trying to, you know... Not really. Eat our meat better, you know? It depends on how old you think the Earth is. There's some people who think the Earth is 2,000 years old. No, they think it's over 8. There are some people that think it's only 2,000. I see. Never heard yes. of them yet. And they are young Earth creationists. And um, that's well, their way of believing. Not so, my way. So they're saying that the year 2012, that 2000, which would be after Christ, would be the original day of the first world. I'm not sure exactly how they believe it that way. I just know that See, they uh, don't, they think that, you know... New Earth creationists, I've dealt with them a lot. And they would believe that the Earth was 6,000 years old when Jesus came. So it's mm -hmm. no older than 8,000 years old. But still, even that number is incredibly... Scientifically, so, it is a ridiculous number to assert. I, I agree. I but that's their belief, and we can't really take so, it from so them. So my question, though, is this. How does this relate to Yeah, how Men does this relate to Men let's, in Black? Let's try and... Find a link to bring it that way. Let's try and do okay. that right now. Is it the idea that if if and we are talking about God and the idea of God creating the earth and all these sorts of things, if God exists, why could he have not? Or why didn't he create aliens as well? You know what I mean? Why were we the only ones? I understand what you're saying there. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the thing. I think that's what it comes down to. What I was trying to say is what did they do in the very beginning? What did who do? If, if like, for example, Lindsay thinks the men in black are aliens. Right. Right? So why don't we see instances of the men in black in the history books all the way back to, for example, the Bible being a big history book, Josephus, well, a lot of other books being big history books. I don't think the Bible is a history book, if you ask me. But again, that's not what this is about. But if each of these books speak about several different things, right? Mm -hmm. Why don't we see certain upcroppings of the men in black in the past? Well, I know that um, the Bible does talk about chariots of fire, mm -hmm. which is like a ring with like windows in it and you could see little like people in there and it was on fire i know i've heard about that and there's even like some paintings that depict um somebody in the bible and there's you can see a a, a burning thing with windows in it and like there's a guy in the background pointing at it i'm sure someone out there knows what that is but i mean i don't know it's see josephus was a historian he was not a christian historian he spoke about a lot of the things that happened in 2000 A.D. Hmm. Well, in 1 A.D., I mean. Now, why don't we find stories of the men in black back then? I think they were just blending in in a different way. Mm -hmm. That's what I was wondering. They wear suits now because they see people wear suits. I was wondering something like that, too. But why? That is if they're aliens, which I don't believe that they are. I think that they're a relatively new thing. But if they so, were around back then, they would have been wearing different clothes. So if it would be robots, then why are they just now coming out? Well, because I think that the idea of aliens making it to Earth is... Like, something that needs to be... Like, you need to protect the population from that idea. I think that's a new concept. I think before, I think people were just totally... Okay with the idea of there being aliens, you know? I mean, they believed in gods. Yeah. They believed in all they of They looked at stuff. it and they would say, that's an act of God. You know, that's mm -hmm. God doing that. That's not something that traveled halfway across the galaxy to reach us, you know? But then, here's my last question about the robots. I'm not saying the idea is bad. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying aliens is bad or wrong either. Right. But in our greedy American world... Hmm. We seem to see things very clearly that if there was some way that they could be making money off robots, they would. Making if what? If they could may be making money off of robots. For example, military strength. They haven't yet done that. Well, they are doing that. They're trying to. There are robots that build cars. Yeah. That's not, making them money. 
But not exactly like a physical human, you know what I mean? Well, that doesn't need to look like a human to make a car. I, I understand what you're saying. The assembly line robots are designed to be able to do what they do as good as they can, you know? But, I mean, we've seen the movies, right? All the people that live in virtual worlds and actually have a robot that they live in, live through. Um, another one that just came out on Netflix is where they can transfer their consciousness to another being hmm. and they don't actually affect themselves unless their consciousness or the CPU chip gets destroyed. Right. So, Which that's like virtual reality stuff. So Yeah. And we're going to get on that topic in a later day. Yeah. My question is, if they have robots like this already back in the 60s, then why don't we see them out every day now in a big money marketing s set or stint? I just don't think that the for something to look like a human, I don't think that's very useful. I think humans are good at, at certain things, but I don't think that we're the perfectly designed creatures that we would need to be to be incredible money makers. But yet you could use a human, you could buy out a human and use it for duties that you didn't want to do. Well, I mean... People don't want to build cars anymore, so they have assembly line robots to do that. Mm -hmm. Before too long, there's not going to be anybody driving cars anymore. That's all the truck drivers, that's mailmen, that's, you know, all the like garbage truck drivers. That's everybody who does that, gone. They don't have to do that anymore because the robots are going to do that for them. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's already happening. They Robots just don't look like people. But I'm talking about 60 years ago. I mean, if that one image... Or that one story I was talking about, we know it wasn't any time recently because you can't right. get into the state house of representatives without a special, um, what do they call it, a special pass. But there's also there's an idea. The reason why they maybe even back then aren't having these robots making a bunch of money is because you know the government government agencies don't really work. They work in layers. Mm -hmm. You know, they do things as they need to do them. So I think it's it's a lot of it is quite simply that, like, they aren't worried about making money. So you think the agency doesn't want to make money? I don't think they need to. They're part of the government. They have all the money they could ever want. But yet the government is one of the most corrupt things for making money. Well, I mean, still, they have Leaking all the money. missile secrets and all that kind of stuff. They have the money, though. I don't think they need to make more of it. I don't think I don't think that the these government agencies, the the government agency that's designed these robots, you know, 50 years ago to tell people that aliens are fake, I don't think that government agency is, you know, scratching for cash. You know what I mean? I think that I think because they already been, hold secrets. I think they've been good for a long time. You know, I don't think that they So if it'd be robots, do you think they're going to someday expose them as robots and let people know the truth? They don't need to. That's the thing. The government doesn't do anything unless it absolutely has to. But what if the aliens are a signal of an invasion? Well, then we'll have to deal with it when the time comes. I don't think, just because, like, I don't think there's any scenario ever where the government would ever say, yeah, the men in black are real and they're actually robots the whole time. I don't think they will ever have a reason to say that. They don't need to. They'll never need to. Why would they? Okay. What can we do to convince them to admit it? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They work in layers, the government. All these agencies, they work in layers, and they don't they do not do anything unless they have to. And everything that they do, <clears throat> they do it because they want to. You know what I mean? I don't think they're... Con I don't think they are constricted or constrained by the things that make us do the things that we do. But that's just my well, opinion. I don't mean to cut this short, but we're running on an hour right now. Mm -hmm. And we want to know what you guys think. Yes. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. Let us know. Go head us up on our email if you want. We have an email and... Yeah. If you don't want your story to be out there, you know what I mean? We get it. You know? Use the use the email if you have a long form. Because, you know, you're only allowed to... It's difficult to leave a long comment in the comment yeah, section. If you have something long form it. that you would really like for us to see, send it to us that way and we'll be able to get to it. 
You quickly. never know. We might email you back and see if we can put it up here on YouTube. Yeah. You know? Maybe we'll read cool. a story. All right. Hmm? Well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like our channel and like what we're doing so far. Hit that like button if you enjoy this video today. Hit the dislike button if you don't enjoy it. You know, you get it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and don't forget to hit the bell notification button to get notified on every single upload we do. Mm -hmm. We do lots of them. We're, <laughs> we're pretty... We're getting there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and remember, till next time, time, keep, keep it, it creepy. creepy.